I'm about to show you excellent chord progressions to use in your pop songs and most of them will fit perfectly, even if you don't know much about music theory. I'm also going to show you some basic harmony tricks that will help you deliver the message you want in your music so they're more meaningful. Hey, how's it going? I'm Talis, pop music producer, and even though I love functional harmony, the not so simple harmony stuff, the truth is, in pop music nowadays, it's not that important. What's always important is simplicity. Listen to the biggest hits, most of them are super simple. Of course, you'll find exceptions. One of the best exceptions that I've heard lately is called Leave the Door Open. But if you know a few chord progressions and you understand your major chords and minor chords, you'll be able to make pop songs. Your melody has to be unique, but your chord progression doesn't. There's no such thing as a chord copyright. So don't feel afraid or embarrassed of using the progressions I'll show you just because they've been overused by songwriters. No one cares, they simply work. All right, here we go. One, five, six, four. In the key of C major, that would be C, G, A minor, F. You can transpose them to any key you want. And if you don't know how to do that, I'll have a video to show you how. It's going to be on the card in the corner. This is the famous songwriter progression, it's the most versatile progression in the world. You can play pretty much any pop song over these chords. I'm sure you've seen the axis of awesome, right? Everyone uses this progression, don't be afraid of using it too. It sounds good, I use it all the time. If you start playing this progression, but you start with the sixth chord, it puts the emphasis on the minor chord and it gives it a different flavor. Six, four, one, five. A minor, F, C, G. If you change the sequence of the chords, you end up with this variation, which is also super fun. One, six, four, five. C, A minor, F, G. Now, if you begin the progression from the four chord, but you play the same loop, you end up with another different vibe just by changing the focus. It's a four, five, one, six, like Rude by Magic. In the key of C major, that would be F, G, C, A minor. Also, if we just replace the four chord with the two chord on that progression, you end up with the one, six, two, five, which is often called the 1950s progression. C, A minor, D minor, G. There's one, two, five, one, which you may recognize from All About That Bass by Megan Trainer. In C major, it's C, D minor, G, C. The more you use major chords, the happier it will sound. So if you're going for something super happy, you can use this chord progression with only major chords. One, four, five, four. C, F, G, F. Or just keep looping for one. I'm actually going to use this one on the chorus of my next song. It feels very relaxing to me.
If you focus on minor chords, then it will sound kind of sad and bitter on a slower tempo and even sexy on a faster tempo if combined with the right rhythm. A progression with only minor chords would be 6, 2, 3. People will normally use different numbers because this progression sounds like you're in a minor key. But I like to number them thinking of the major key always. I think it's easier that way. So A minor, D minor, E minor. Here's what this progression sounds like. It's worth mentioning that you can replace the minor three chord with the major three chord. That's a common thing in minor keys. A minor, D minor, E major. It sounds very powerful. How about a progression that sounds super dark, it comes packed with two minor chords right in the beginning, it's the 2, 6, 1, 5. In C major that would result in D minor, A minor, C, G. almost forgot to mention there will be a free download link for the MIDI files of every progression I show in this video. It will be in the description below. Hey, I'm about to show you different harmony tools that you can use to make your songs more memorable. But first, feel free to ask me any question in the comment section and tell me what you want to learn next and I'll record that video if I know the answer. Functional harmony, that's a cool subject. The most important device is the cadence. Some of the chord progressions I've showed you actually use these cadences. To make it super simple, the 5 chord moving to the 1 chord causes a strong sense of resolution. 1 sounds like home, like the end of a journey. 5 sounds like, please take me back home. It has this tension that you can resolve by going back to the 1 chord. If you don't release that tension and instead go somewhere else after the 5 chord, usually the 6 chord, that's called the deceptive cadence. Feels like, ah. Uh, I thought we were going home, we were so close. I use that when I want to delay the resolution of the tension. Hold on to that tension because the lyrics ask for it. Here's an example from my song, Maybe We'd Be Together, on the transition from the chorus to the bridge. Another cadence that resolves beautifully but doesn't have that strong sense of resolution like the 5-1 is the 4-1. Going from the 4 chord to the 1 chord. This one is actually my favorite, F to C. I like it especially when it borrows the minor 4 chord. So it goes from major 4 to minor 4 to 1. It sounds like this, F major, F minor, C. This is the Plago Cadence, some people also call it the Amen Cadence. And an easy way to spice up your chords and give them a totally different flavor is by adding another note, like the seventh note. And you can incorporate that to any chord progression and give it your own spin. This is what a major seventh chord sounds like. Here's a C with the major seventh. It sounds more dreamy and fluid than a major chord. You can also use chord inversions, which is simply not having the root note of the chord as the bass, like this. That was a C chord, but the lowest note was the fifth note instead of the root note. On a C major chord, you would make G the bass note instead of the usual C. Chord inversions help reduce the feeling of resolution when you use them on the one chord, if that's your intention. And you can also borrow chords from different keys. You don't always have to stay in the same key. One chord that's frequently borrowed is the major two chord. It works really well in a progression like one, two, four, one. So C, D, F, C.
this progression has a very distinct sound. Remember the song Forget You by CeeLo Green? They borrowed the two chord on that song. I used the diminished chord in my song Silence Hurts More to create this disturbing tension that matched the lyrics and I made it last longer than the other chords to emphasize it and delay the resolution. What can be worse than your silence? The I will have lots of videos on functional harmony in the future because I absolutely love it. I'm obsessed with harmony and how we can make sounds lead you somewhere. But remember, pop music doesn't have to lead anywhere anymore. Oftentimes, it makes us feel like it's roaming and drifting, and that's fine. The progression doesn't have to make sense harmonically, as long as it loops well. Sometimes, they don't even use the one chord from the major scale, and sometimes they make absolutely no sense from a traditional harmony standpoint. The best example I can think of is Shape of You by Ed Sheeran. Huge song, beat all the records, the progression is 6, 2, 4, 5. A minor, D minor, F, G. Alright, these were my favorite chord progressions for pop music, but it's your music, you can do whatever you want. Hey, how'd you like this video? What's your favorite chord progression? Here's what I'm gonna do. In 20 seconds, another video will pop on your screen. It's the seven songwriting tips and tricks that I think will bring you closer to achieving your music making goals. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next videos. Hit the bell, turn those notifications on. Thanks for hanging out. I'm Talis, and we'll talk again on the next one. <laughs>